Day. Today will be dry with highs in the 60s. Tomorrow, though, rain chances roll in. I'll have your full forecast that's coming up. The University of Georgia football team mourning the loss of a teammate and staff member after a car crash. We break down what happened. President Joe Biden visits the Peach State. We share details about his historic visit. Plus, it cost us, it usually costs us $75, but now it's going up to triple that amount to almost $200. Inflation, how one local business plans to handle the rise in prices. Good Monday morning, Central Georgia. You're taking a live look over a beautiful downtown Macon. The time is now 6.30 a.m. here on this January the 16th. Happy Martin Luther King Jr. Day, Central Georgia. I'm Wanye Reese. Well, if you're going out this morning doing any marches or volunteering, Taylor, you're definitely going to want that heavy jacket and hat. Absolutely. It is very cold across central Georgia, but don't get too worried. We'll actually warm up very nicely by the afternoon. Here's a live look from downtown Macon. Dark and cold temperatures in Macon in the upper 20s. Area wide, we're seeing 20s and 30s. 30 now in Gordon, 30 in Dublin, 30 in Unadilla up into Montezuma, 33 is probably one of our warmest spots there in Butler. Area wide though, we are staying very dry. So on top of the heavy coat, make sure you have lotion and make sure you have chapstick because you will feel the dryness. Live radar shows you that we're dry too in terms of rain. We have nothing going on on live radar. A few clouds will be rolling in and out of central Georgia this morning and we'll have more cloud cover coming this afternoon. So with this afternoon coming, we'll have a little breeze from the southwest. We'll be pulling in some warm, moist air. High temperatures will climb into the low to mid 60s, but rain chances return tomorrow. I'll have the full forecast that's coming up. Thank you, Taylor. We'll talk to you soon. This morning, we have sad news to share with you. Hours after celebrating their national championship win, the University of Georgia football team is now mourning the loss of a teammate and staff member after a car crash. One of the passengers was 20 year old football player Devin Woolock, who died at the site of the accident and the driver identified as 24 year old Chandler LaCroix, who died at the hospital from her injuries. LaCroix was a recruiting staffer for the UGA football team. Willock was a sophomore offensive lineman. athens Clark County Police say it happened around 2.45 yesterday morning when a 2021 Ford Expedition was traveling south on Barnett Shoals Road when the driver lost control of the car and left the road before hitting two power poles and several trees. Two other passengers were hurt, football player Warren McClendon and staffer Victoria Bowles. Both as of this morning are in stable condition. Police say the investigation is still ongoing. The crash happened a little over 12 hours after the national champions were welcomed home in a parade. This is one of the last stories that Devin Hullock shared to his Instagram. In this video, you see it here on your screen. He's surrounded by his teammates and thousands of fans. At around 6.15 p.m. on Saturday, a few hours after the championship celebration ended, Sam Kramer took to Twitter to thank University of Georgia football player Devin Willock. Willock retweeted the post with three red hearts. The post read, special thank you to Devin for taking time for my grandson when he didn't have to. You went out of your way to make him feel special and you made his day. Good luck next year. Go dogs. This is one of the last things University of Georgia player Devin Willock did before his death. People across the state and the nation are mourning their deaths, including head coach Kirby Smart. He released a statement that said in part, Devin was an outstanding young man in every way. He was always smiling, was a great teammate, and a joy to coach. Chandler was a valuable member of our football staff and brought an incredible attitude and energy every single day. Please join me in sending our prayers and condolences to all of the families and countless amount of people who are impacted by their deaths this morning. It's 634. Today is Martin Luther King Jr. Day and President Joe Biden came to Atlanta to mark MLK's birthday with remarks at the historic Ebenezer Baptist Church. Yesterday, the president aimed to celebrate the civil rights leader's legacy while also reviving the Biden administration's call for sweeping voting rights legislation. Biden was invited to Ebenezer by the church's pastor, Democratic Senator Raphael Warnock. Ebenezer is a church where King once preached. The battle for the soul of this nation is perennial. It's a constant struggle. It's a constant struggle between hope and fear, kindness and cruelty, justice and injustice. 
against those who traffic in racism, extremism, and insurrection. A battle fought on battlefields and bridges, from courthouses and ballot boxes to pulpits and protest. And at our best, the American promise wins out. Meanwhile, Senator Raphael Warnock shared a few words at the church about UGA football player Devin Woolock and Chandler LaCroix. The recruiting staff were killed after a single car crash in Athens early that morning. We pray for our city. We pray for our state. We pray for our nation. We pray for the world. For as Dr. King reminded us, we are tied in a single garment of destiny caught up in an inescapable network of mutuality. Whatever affects one directly, affects all indirectly. Well, let's take a trip in the 13 WMAZ archives. We're going to go ahead and take a look back at Macon's MLK Day Parade from 1993. At that time, people's biggest concern was the violence in the African-American community. We're talking about violence within the community. The only way that I feel that we are going to be able to cure that is from within the community itself. That's through the churches, the organization, and the families. Love was his ultimate aim. And I know that if we love one another, we wouldn't kill each other like we are doing now. Those words are from local civil rights activist Frank Johnson, who marched with King in Selma and Montgomery back in the 1960s. The group started their march from the Fort Hill neighborhood and converged with another group of marchers at Macon City Hall. Today, the march will take place again, and we will give you more details about it a little bit later on in the show. It's 637 right now. Surveyors from the National Weather Service say they're confident a tornado did touch down Thursday, impacting Pulaski, Dodge and Wilcox counties. They say that's based off of the damage they've seen and the debris detected on radar, but they say it's difficult for their crew to survey the damage because of how rural and swampy parts of the area impact it is. As for Crisp and Dooley counties, they saw winds up to 70 miles per hour. The National Weather Service says they're still working to determine if damage was caused by a tornado or just straight line winds. One of the areas we know that was hit the hardest in our state, that's Spalding County. The National Weather Service confirmed that at least two tornadoes hit an EF3 and an EF2. Dion Clemens says that his home will never be the same. Clemens says that his mother was at home when the storm hit. He says tornadoes have always passed by their town, so they weren't expecting it. Clemens says his mom is at his sister's, but right now he's having to live out of his car. Brian Dion's brother says that this was their childhood home, but they're trying to stay positive. Everybody kind of lost everything, you know, that we did gain, and it's kind of old out here. So a lot of us didn't have uh, rental insurance or home insurance. But uh, our plan is, you know, kind of stick together as a community and, um, you know, take a day at a time and build each other back up. The U.S. Department of Labor says egg prices have gone up by nearly, get this, 60 percent. Making shoppers tell us they bought eggs today for seven dollars, but the prices for your local restaurants to stay supplied are even worse. Case eggs cost us, they usually cost us $75, but now it's going up to triple that amount to almost $200. H&H &H says that they go through more than 3,000 eggs each week, which costs them nearly $600. They use eggs for the majority of their meals, but for now, they aren't planning to find an alternative. We don't want to raise the prices on our menu, but if it stays high, then we might don't have a choice just to stay in business. They expect to see a potential price drop in the next three months, but nothing is guaranteed. For now, they plan to just take things day by day. Well, it's an important piece of forgotten history about the men who integrated the Marine Corps at the height of World War II. Today on this MLK Day, we introduce you to the Montford Point Marines. We were allowed into the Marine Corps to prove that they could not be Marine. And the whole idea was to frustrate you so much that you would either quit and go home or stay in. I wasn't about to quit. They were the best and the toughest. And I said, that's me. Being a Marine, I sit on the shoulders of these men who did some pretty amazing things. The bigger picture is there are still 18,000 that don't know that there's an honor awaiting their loved one. Their legacy lives on in perpetuity.
13 WMAZ presents our America Mission Montford Point today at 530. You can watch it right here on 13 and of course on the 13 WMAZ Plus app on your Roku and Amazon Fire TV devices. It's 640 here on this Monday morning, a very cold and chilly Monday morning, Taylor. I mean, I know a lot of people are probably going to be out going to marches. Mm -hmm. They're going to be doing community service. You got to bundle up the hand yeah. warmers. Hey, the yes. hand warmers are a good thing to me. Some coffee to get you going a little bit because it's cold. But by this afternoon, we'll have a really pretty day with temperatures doing a pretty much a 40 degree temp temperature swing from this morning. So right now, here's a live look over the downtown Dublin area and a few people out and about now going to work or maybe even going to their community service projects. I'm sure they have the car seat warmers on. It is cold outside right now in Dublin. We're talking temperatures in those low 30s area wide. We're seeing some 30s and some 20s 27 now in Macon 27 in Byron 28 now in Fort Valley and 31 in Warner Robins area wide again just all the way cold most of us if not all of us are at or below freezing now through the rest of the day we will see some good sunshine in the morning but clouds will build in later it's all ahead of our very unsettled pattern will enter for the next week right now in the and making again in the 30s and 20s. But by this mid morning, we should see upper 30s, low 40s, lots of sunshine, a few clouds rolling in by lunchtime into the mid 50s for your Monday lunchtime hour. Then by the time we head towards 3 p.m., we get a surge of some warmer air from the Gulf of Mexico. That's going to allow us to warm up and see a little bit of sunshine here and there. High temperatures in those low 60s and cloud cover just starts to blanket central Georgia into Monday night. Now overall for today, it's going to be a dry day. No worries about any type of rain for today. We'll have high temperatures across the area in the low 60s. Again, clouds are building in as we head into tonight. Again, all ahead of this really unsettled pattern pattern that will bring rain chances over and over and over again in central Georgia. Tomorrow morning, expect temperatures to be into those low, uh, excuse me, the upper 40s, low 50s. Thanks to that warm air from the Gulf of Mexico, the cold front just bringing all that through central Georgia. Rain chances will hold off until the afternoon, and then when they do arrive, they will be concentrated to our northern parts of the area. So rain over and over and over again for places like Thomaston, Forsyth, Eatonton, Millville, and Macon. Some of our places south of those areas may not see a drop really until Thursday. Overall, Wednesday will be cloudy once again. A few sprinkles are possible, and then Thursday, our next cold front arrives which will bring more widespread rain and maybe a rumble of thunder or two. Overall, though, we'll be dry today with 60s in the forecast. 70s return tomorrow with our unsettled pattern. Rainy tomorrow, Wednesday, Thursday. We'll have a mainly dry day on Friday before more rain returns for the weekend.